Welcome back to the shop. It's Mike once again. On the screen are most of the parts needed to complete our NeuroSav and D621 rangefinder from Star Wars The Last Jedi. If you'll recall, in our previous video, we disassembled this thing. Now, there was a couple of things that I forgot to take off of this. There was a little clip inside here that had two rivets holding it on that I had to get rid of. And something else that was rather inconsequential but it was sort of in the way. I'll remember it here in a minute. Now I've gone ahead and I've masked off these two lenses. This one when you unscrew it you can actually take the glass out of so I won't need to mask that off. And then I've masked the body of this the camera body itself off and then this little lens here. Now I went ahead and I peeled away the pseudo leather covering that was on these. It was just really dried glue underneath. I was able to get a scalpel under a corner and then peel the whole thing away and then scrape it with a, um, a straight razor and get everything to come off of it. So this is pretty much ready for paint. I gotta put some tape there. And then the front of this will get painted. Now in the visual dictionary, this appears to have remnant paint on it all the way around. And since that's the version I'm going for, I'm going to put black paint on here. And if you watched my video about the uh, Aliens M56 battery and belt tool, you'll know how I'm going to go ahead and get a chipping effect on this. This is all going to be sort of a worn metal finish, and then this will be covered. And it will be covered by that plate. And that plate, and that cover, and these little greeblies right here, all came from Replica Prop Form member Trooper underscore Trent, who made these absolutely beautiful parts from little more than some screenshots to figure out how the dimensions of all of these and what they look like. This is the little trapezoid piece that he made, which apparently it's pretty dead on for a real one from, from a sportster. Now, if I was gonna make this the screen used version, I'd be using this, but I'm not, so I don't need this part. So I'll save this and maybe find a use for it somewhere else. But this is your, your, your viewfinder, which actually just sits, I end up cracking it a little bit, but it's not so bad. Oh, wrong way. This actually just sits, there's a, the, the old viewfinder is actually under here, under the tape, but it just sits quite flush right there, right up against it. It's rather nice, actually. And then this plate goes across the bottom, covering up all of this. That remains exposed. And then the rest of these are all greeblies for the top of it, this little piece right here covers that up rather beautifully. I'm going to go ahead and prime all of these black at the same time I do this. And this will be ready to begin reassembly. I can put everything inside. Now you can't you can't attach this or the parts that are inside of a small black envelope. This one here. Because you've got to have everything else done before you attach these. And these on the side of the, the rangefinder, there's some ribbing, which looks like grip. This is still uncured cast uh, 3D printed resin. So I can't expose it to UV light. That way it remains flexible. And then once I get it to the right uh, bend on, on either side, then I can cure it and glue it down. But once you attach those grips and this, this can never be opened again. So that will completely seal this up which is why I've taken most of the guts out of it because that makes it just a little bit lighter. Um, but we'll go ahead and get this painted and then come back once that's dry. All right, so I, I went and shot this with uh, some some matte black and uh, some Rust-Oleum matte black and then cooked it with the uh, uh, heat gun for a little bit, just a few minutes, and then went back at it with some 400 grit sandpaper and took most of the paint back off. So I really like that effect. It gives it a nice wear pattern I did forget to remove the Bell and Howell name plates from here and here, so I had to go back and redo that. But yeah, that's that looks nice. I like that. Yep. I was going to use the, the pull tape method that I'd used, but I didn't like what was happening. I think I'd cooked the paint a little bit too long, so it wasn't coming up. So I came back with some 400 grit sandpaper and got me a nice, a nice bunch of wear on there. And it's fairly close to the wear pattern that's on the... Uh, Visual Dictionary version. So I'm happy with where this is at. And I'm letting the rest of the parts dry a little bit more organically uh, before I go and attack them with 400 grit sandpaper. And then uh, and then we'll, 
I, I, I'll come back when I'm ready to start attaching some parts. Here's the, the three turret parts that they're all painted up and they're still a little bit tacky in places, but that's fine because I'm gonna, I'm gonna sand all of them a little bit with this 400 grit sandpaper and you can see what you can get with still relatively, um, honestly, it's, not, it's still wet paint. And you don't need to take a whole lot off, so one or two quick firm passes and you get that nice wear pattern on it. You won't be able to see this, but we'll do it anyway to give you a good example of how this looks. Now make sure you go in every direction because wear on a machine does not exist in only one direction generally, particularly if it's wear from the environment. See, that looks great. I wish you would be able to see that, but you can't. And it doesn't even have to be even all the way around. Good enough. Take this off so that we can actually get around it. But yeah, nice and nice and black for now. Let's see where that little bit of wet paint was because I think I sprayed a little bit too long there got a bit of a pool going um, that's gone now and all that mat is gone now too it's now quite flat once you take sandpaper to it but it was and I, I didn't really use matte for any matte paint for any specific reason it was just the first one I found it was the first uh, can of black spray paint that I found because I kind of knew what I was going to do with it and what the, the ultimate effect was going to be wear in there. Yes, that's nice. That looks pretty good. And that looks even better. All right. Okay, reassembly time. So we pretty much have to go in a bit of a reverse order. I'm gonna attach all the stuff on the front first, just because it'll be easier for me to keep track of parts. You need to start with the prism and uh, viewfinder cover. I painted this black because I can't really tell in the photograph if it is or isn't, but it doesn't make sense that that would be clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in place and then We'll run the screws down in it. All right, those are in place. So then we need to install this this business right here. And that just is, in theory, going to drop down in there. You've got these little... So on this assembly, this, this grate business is actually held on by these two copper clips that wrap around here, which is the only reason I'm putting all this back in. And also it'll give it... Because there's no actual fasteners to hold this down. All the fasteners to hold it down are on this assembly. So, in theory, that slides in and drops down. Will it work? Yes. Professional. Okay, that's installed. Uh, get yourself a pair of tweezers, because holy moly. Those are not easy to get to. I actually only put two fasteners in because, well, I lost the third one trying to get it in there. It flew out of the tweezers and that was that. So before I put the lenses on, the, the, the turret assembly, I need to add uh, the, the sling swivels for the sling itself that goes on it. And I need to drill holes into the body to do that. So I'm gonna do that. Your sling swivels are these guys. Talon one inch swivel bases. These were identified by uh, the folks over at one of the Star Wars forums as being the correct type of sling swivels for, at the very least, for the Visual Dictionary one, because the one in the film does not actually have the sling swivels, only the mounts themselves, those little bits right there. Uh, you can find these on Amazon, link in the description below. 
and I'm going to drill some holes. All right, so all of this is emptied out, of course, and then I've got both of these lugs put in place. This one's just threaded in. <clears throat> I don't need to shorten that down since I'm not putting all of the guts back in. Now this is your bottom plate, and this little disc right here, I just glued that in place because when you've got it in here and it's positioned correctly, you're able to see it through that little window. Now, again, I don't know if that's a detail that actually exists, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep it because it just kind of looks good. Now, we gotta install the inner parts, which that's, that's it. That's pretty much it. So it's just this thing now. Let's see if I can get this lined up. Yeah, so that's pretty much all that's gonna go back inside. So we'll get that assembly screwed together and put it back in, and then we can mount the whole thing down. And now I'm, I'm pretty much done with the inside of it. That's, that's all I really have to do. And this latch is no longer working because its positive attachments point on this side has been removed. So I'm, I'm actually just going to go ahead and seal that up because I don't need it to open anymore. And now we'll just be working on exterior detail. For weathering these little, these little greeblies to make them look like steel, I use, uh, Vallejo's uh, 70.865 oily steel as a base and then I'll be going through with some washes and a little bit of weathering powder when I'm done but I gotta get all the greeblies attached now these greeblies these are again these are all the ones made by Trooper Trent from the RPF there's this little flat panel it goes right there there's this little thing Nobody really knows what this is for. That goes right about there. I'll get the positioning dead on here shortly. There's this thing. Again, nobody knows what they're actually supposed to be. Greeblies often don't have a stated purpose. They're just there to look pretty. And that's all the detail on the top. This large panel actually goes on the bottom. But we need to get these attached and seal it up. And then uh, we can get the this panel on the bottom and then we'll get the viewfinder on and then do weathering, washes, and then the last step, which we'll get to the last step when we get to the last step. But I'm gonna attach all these parts and I'm just gonna use regular old super glue to put these down. And then I will do the bottom plate and I will show you how I uh, paint that. And then, yeah, we'll move on and be very nearly done. Okay, so all of the parts are on. Remember, you've got your little two screws here. Don't forget your ball bearing. These two greeblies, I put these two on. I, I guessed on the spacing based on the photograph. The viewfinder's been installed. I actually just used glue to install it. There's four screw holes supplied with it. I don't have the right screw holes, and when I tried to enlarge it, I ended up cracking part of it. So I just decided to go with glue because I've, I didn't want to mess it up any further than I already had. All of our little greeblies on the top are installed. I still have to install this one on the bottom, but I'll get to that in a bit. What I'm gonna do now is put these ribs on the side. Now these ribs, it's thought that they might be some sort of reinforced wire, but these are some more that Trooper Trent made, and they're made out of uncured uh, 3D printed resin. So what I, their spacing appears to be about their own width. So I cut a piece of tape that's its own width, and I'm going to use that as spacing. And I'm actually going to glue down this side of it, this, this end right here, and then use my heat gun to fold it over. And then once it's in the correct shape and I've got it all glued down, tomorrow morning, because it's nighttime already where I'm at, I'll take it outside and let it cure. And then do the same thing over here. Now this one, this one doesn't go all the way to this metal rib. It's It stops right about there, It is. it appears. I'll have to do some measurements to figure it out but so far it's looking pretty good it's starting to look like uh, a beat up old camera used as a rangefinder no it's starting to look like a prop isn't it I'm quite happy with it this hole will actually be covered by this so that we can ignore it's all sealed up now too and uh, I've done a little bit of the initial weathering on it with some oily steel uh, but once I get all of the parts on then I'll start to do the proper weathering okay so we have all the parts on now. I've got our ribs on the side. Now, most unfortunately, when I went to bend these things, I got in a bit of a hurry. And um, I ended up breaking them at the bottoms on both sides. And then after I cured it, 
it had cracked right here. So that happens. I'd never really worked with 3D printed resin before, so it was a mistake. And um, I'll just, I'll weather it to make it look like damage and I'll add it in. It'll be fine. It's my own interpretation of a prop that was never used in a film. Yeah, so now we're gonna, I'm gonna do a wash on it. And I've got another one of my, my little tins here. This one's, oh, this one's fruit cake as well. I'm gonna use just regular old black paint mixed down with water and give it a nice black wash over the entire thing. And once that dries, I'll go through and I'll do a little bit of corrosion here and there, some dirt, this, that, and the other thing. And then, uh, yeah, then it'll be done. It'll be time for the installation of the final part, the one part remaining that is actually a real part as well. And that is the sling. And I'll get into that uh, after we get done with the weathering part. So let me mix up some wash and we'll come back. You know what? You can stick around for this. Just Vallejo. I use a lot of Vallejo paint, clearly. Oh, I've got a little bit of business in there. Get out. There we go. I don't need a whole lot of wash for this. That's really probably enough paint. And then we use this tin, another tin, another uh, sea ration tin full of dirty water. It's just black and silver paint in there. That's probably thin enough. This is actually probably too much water, but it won't matter. It'll act as a carrier for the paint. Now I just brush it on pretty liberally and then using a paper towel, I just dab it off. Or in this case, wipe it off. You should just dab it off. If you wipe it off, you leave streaks. And you don't want streaks because dirt doesn't, doesn't form in anything that re represents a pattern generally. It often just sort of gets on there naturally. Duh, it's dirt. It's not really telling you anything, is it? And try to avoid getting anything on that glass. Paper towel. Close enough. Same up front. Here. Oh, I missed a spot. not going to do much to this part, but do due diligence and all. Oh, actually, no, that, that darkens it up just a little bit. I like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not disappointed with the rest of it. I'm going to actually use some of this black paint over here to clean up this. Add a little bit of oily steel. Take a walk. I need to trim that up a bit. I did dry brush a little bit of uh, the oily steel onto these sling swivels. Now the prop itself does not appear to have leather on it, the screen use prop. It's very hard to tell in the visual dictionary if it does. I'm leaving it on because I kind of like the appearance. Do a little bit of a wash on these guys. it nicely. Alright, we'll just let that dry for a little bit. Alright, that's dried enough. If we catch a little bit of excess liquid, that's fine. For the weathering, I'm going to do a really simple, I'm going to go with, these are my go-tos for weathering just about anything. The Tamara Weathering Master Powders A and C. This one's rust and metal, and then this one's just dirt and mud, uh, light sand, uh, sand and mud. I'm just going to use a couple of brand new brushes that I buy. I buy these in bulk, and now we're going to do a little bit of, just a little bit of weathering here and there with this, these powders, and then uh, move on. We'll start with this guy. Links for these are below. 
see I've used this a lot, it's a bit mixed. Start with this, the silver. Yeah, there's a little bit of liquid in there. That's okay. And all this is really going to do is just soften it a little bit. Soften up some of the details, some of the edges, some of the weathering. Make some of the edges pop a little bit. We are going to add a little bit of corrosion to this thing here and there. Not too much. Don't want to overdo it. Again, just blend it with your finger. Just a little bit of, a little bit of rouging, if you will. Now we'll use the dirt mud sand. And this one is going to be, oh, let's see, I'll start with mud. This thing's going to collect a lot of dirt. Now, since we saw this on the planet of Crate in the movie, I don't know, maybe Poe didn't bring it with him, maybe he found it there. So it might have quite a bit of filth built up. And I'm just brushing little bits of it into these edges where it would catch some filth and collect it. Maybe he had it with him. Maybe he hasn't had time to service it in a while. Who knows? I'm gonna make these a little dirty. This is where your hands are supposed to contact with it, your fingers. And human hands are disgusting. I imagine other species' hands are as disgusting, so. All the other critters in the Star Wars universe that would handle these things would probably leave some filth behind, so. It's unfortunate that broke right there, but it's okay. It's old. It's damaged. It's used. Make it subtle, not over the top. Because remember, when you're doing weathering, you can overdo it right away. And I don't want to overdo it. I want this thing to look nice sitting in my display case. And I want you to enjoy it too. And maybe take something away from this video and perhaps you learned something. Maybe you had an idea of how to do something else a different way. Who knows? Hopefully hopefully something helpful comes with this for you. Okay. I'm going to call that weathering done. I don't want to overdo it too much. I'm quite happy with how it looks. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So now for the last part, the last found part in this build, the very last part of this build, is uh, the final found part used on this, which it's actually found... It's actually found in a couple of different props and costumes as well from both this movie and Solo and Rogue One. And it's this. This is a Yugoslavian four cell mag pouch uh, that was intended to be used with the M56 submachine gun that was a Yugoslavian designed weapon. Um, these things are seen on shore troopers, on some of the Rogue One uh, Scarif rebel commandos. They're on the uh, Mud Troopers from Solo, and this strap is what's used on the uh, rangefinders from The Last Jedi. So we're going to take these straps off and transfer them. Doing that is actually quite simple. This one is quite old. I've, I've had this for many years now, 
And um, I've never had anything to do with it until I started doing props and I realized what this was. So these have these two straps here, which are intended to go, you're supposed to have a cartridge belt or a pistol belt that goes through this. But to get these out, you have to cut them. And as old as these are, and as stained as this one is, um, these aren't rare. So you can still find them on eBay. They like 25, 30 bucks generally. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna cut that using a, a scalpel. Try not to cut the pouch itself because I'll probably use it for a short trooper or actually probably a mud trooper from Solo because I have most of the helmet already. And I have the uh, a lot of the found parts for that helmet as well. And that will be a future video most likely. I don't intend to do all Star Wars props. In fact, most of the props I'll be doing are non-Star Wars related in these uh, in this series. It's associated with my channel. Okay, that's the pouch removed. Don't stab yourself with your scalpel. I almost did. Oh, the blade came out. Gosh darn. So on some of these, particularly this one, you have this little pouch here. This is actually for a magazine reloader. So to get this guy off, I don't actually know how. Oh, that's really simple. You just pull it right off. Off! There we go. Yeah, so you've got that. I don't know if that's used in any costumes or props, but of course, as always, keep it. So here it is. Here's the strap. There's your adjustment. So we'll get our guy. There's that guy. Now this is on this side. Get in there, jerk. Now once you have them off, you need to go in with a, your scalpel and you need to cut the stitching because you need to remove this D-ring. Look at how gross that is under there. That's disgusting. Anyway, now you can probably sew this back together once you've got it through this, this stock swivel. I'm actually just going to barge it for right now and then I'll come back with some rivets. So, take your scalpel and then where the seam is, just run it through. Be careful not to punch through and stab yourself. I've already done that once. It's unfun. And then separate. And once again, that's properly disgusting. It's, it's wet. Oh yeah, no, that smells wonderful. It doesn't smell wonderful. And then through there. And now, once that's barged up and riveted in place, there you have it. One complete Neuro Sav Sav Sav, however it's pronounced, ND621 rangefinder from Star Wars The Last Jedi, um, at least as far as the, uh, the uh, visual dictionary goes. And um, I'm quite happy with that, despite the issues that I had. And then I'll get this all sorted out. And uh, yeah, so thank you for watching the disassembly, if you did, of the Bell & Howell 8mm tr uh, triple lens camera thing here, the Director Series business. And then uh, if you've been watching up to this point, thank you as well for watching uh, my undisassembly. And um, if you like this video, if you found it interesting, if you want to see more, uh, hit the like and subscribe, leave comments below. Um, consider my Patreon page because uh, uh, if you help me out through Patreon, I'll be able to purchase more parts to make more of these projects and continue on. Um, I'll be back in a week or so with another video, another project, and I'll probably make some mistakes there too. Once again, thank you for watching. Cheers.